In part one of this series, we were up on the roof with Darren Hine learning about the solar panels and system basics. Now we'll join him in the basement to talk about the tank and system controls, costs, rebates, and payback time, and some of the nuances of getting the job done right. So these are coming from the panels on the roof. You got your hot coming out and your cold going, cold going back in. Got it. And they're going to connect to the top of our pump house, which is still up on the truck. Still on okay. The truck. <laughs> um, there's a pump house. It's got a digital readout. It'll tell us the temperature of the panels, the temperature of the liquid in between the panels and the tank, and then there'll also be a thermostat on the tank, and it'll tell us the temperature of the tank. Okay. So. The glycol will go down through the pump house, and then there'll be two more hoses that come down and connect into the tank itself. Um, I would say probably by the end of the week, that whole this whole system will be set up. We have a, a little height issue, so we have to dig down into the floor oh, there. Oh, yeah, to jackhammer that out, huh? Yeah, well, a jackhammer would have been nice. Sledgehammer, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're going to kind of do kill two birds with one stone. We're going to um, dig down and create a French drain for them as well. So, because there is no drainage in this basement, and with this having 80 gallons, we want to have somewhere where water can go if it does anything happens. Oh, that's a bonus then. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So, two birds with one stone. Yep. And then on top of this is where all of our mixing valve and everything else goes, and we'll run pipes from here, go all the way over to that existing, or correction, he'll run pipes from there, it'll go all the way over to here, and then we'll just connect our hot and cold to his new pipes. And then dump, dump all the hot water into there. Cold water, the, the cold line, main cold line will dump into here, and then it'll force all the hot over there, and then from there it'll go into the existing domestic hot water. Oh, cool. So it's all preheated, and then again, if anything were to happen with that, this has its own electrical element, element, so we can hook that up, and it's a backup electric hot water heater. Wow, that's perfect. Now they're saying uh, the because electricity is more expensive. The, if you have an electric, existing electric hot water heater, this system is going to pay for itself faster than a traditional gas. I'm not, not too sure about that math. It's it's really close between the two because when it's a gas one, the pilot light's always burning. Um, so, but I think that's mainly because of the cost of electricity and and whatnot. But they're very close comparisons. They're saying an average system. Um, at a, a two-panel system with an 80-gallon tank is around 8,500 installs, parts mm -hmm. and labor. And then you get your federal tax credits, 30% federal tax credit, 15% um, state, and it's different state to state. Um, and in some local districts, like the city of Fort Collins is working on rebate now. Um, XL Energy and the, the energy companies are trying to do that as well. Um, they say that roughly a payoff is between five and six years. Uh, depending on what type. If you have a boiler system, the payoff is just a little bit longer. But with the gas and electric, they're the fastest payoff. And with that's pretty quick. And yeah, then the other is. thing is that when we when it comes to solar hot water systems, natural daylight or PV, the the biggest problem I've seen is the inexperience of the roofing people. They put all this nice system in, but they know they know everything they can about solar hot water or PV or or anything else, but they don't know a lot about the roofing. Right. So then somebody like me comes in and has to repair little bits and pieces, just technique. Um, so it's really important if you're going to get something, <coughs> excuse me, still a little dusty in here. Yeah. Um, make sure the qualifications for the installer aren't just, he knows everything about the system, but he knows about the house that he's putting it in as well. Mm -hmm. uh, most common thing that people don't think about. Oh, he knows, I've never heard that much technical information about a solar hot water heater. Uh, what's the difference between a shake or, or a woven or a traditional shake shingle roof? Well, I don't know. What, what is that? Right, right. Uh, so, and that's uh, ultimately what you marry up to, and exactly. that's where your weaknesses are. So Exactly. So um, we know the basics, and we learn everything, all the technical stuff, uh, which is really important, knowing how to get it in, watertight. Everything else is just a matter of a little wrench here, a little tweak there. Uh, programming the computer system so it's flowing at the right speed, right rate of speed, and that's nice. You can find all that in the manual. Yeah. Um, the installation techniques, you can't. That's an experience, and, and over time, you just got to do Makes it. Makes sense. Right well, I'll be anxious to come back at the end of the week and check out the pump house and yeah. the controls and stuff. Well, the hole should be dug. The, the secondary uh, French drain should be in for them. Pump house will be in. The only thing that won't be connected will be this tank won't have water in it, and that'll be... 
Uh, it's not an issue for him right now. He doesn't have any hot water, so that'll probably be a couple months before yeah. we actually get that. But we'll have the glycol in here. Um, the system will will be able to be plugged in and running. But once we charge it up, set everything, we can unplug it, wait for his electrician to put anything in, and all the programming will stay in there and it'll be memorized. The nice thing about glycol is it's just like an antifreeze, only it's FDA approved. If mm -hmm. you can stand the taste, you can drink it. Uh, <laughs> And it tastes pretty nasty, getting some in my face by accident. But uh, it won't freeze and like traditional older water heaters would use water or like in Hawaii they only use water. There's no yeah. glycol there. Yeah. But uh, the glycol just turns into a, a sluggish gel, which you can heat up really quick. Because if if it gets too cold, this one will though that one will pump water into this, which will heat up the glycol, which will let it start flowing again the other way. Really nice thing is in the winter if you get a foot or two foot of snow on top of your panels, the tank will heat up the glycol. The glycol will melt the snow on the panels, and then once the sun is oh, hitting yeah. the panels again, it goes the other way. Very cool. So it's really nice. Very minimal energy usage, uh, and any energy it does use is just to keep the, ru the system running um, uh, efficiently. It's just from a circulation standpoint. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so you don't have to worry about, and with glycol not expanding when it freezes or gels up, you don't have to worry about pipes bursting or anything else. The system is, as you can see, it's all um, pressure fittings and, and uh, washers and gaskets. There's no sweating in the coppers. You don't have to yep. worry about you don't have to worry about uh, pipes breaking or seams popping or anything else like that. And again, this is flexible, flexible stainless steel hosing. Um, that's the only. This is the only thing that's going to adjust pricing um, because this is ten dollars a foot. He is lucky he has one of the shorter runs because it's pretty much straight down. Two stories, but it's pretty much straight mm -hmm. down. Uh, but there's, we did a three-story or two-story Victorian uh, a couple months ago, and it used almost 40 feet of hose. That was just one way. And at 10 bucks a foot, yeah, that that's... got pretty expensive. But his system was probably around 11.5, 11 11.6. Because so, you're just adding to the 8,500 or the... Well, he was at, actually had a three-panel system because his house okay. was so big. But it... It added almost a thousand dollars on because of the extra hose that he had to use. But again, the, with the solar hot water, its parts and labor are deducted off the federal taxes. Like with natural daylighting, it's thirty percent flat up to fifteen hundred dollars, but it's only parts. So you know, all these Energy Star things are really interesting. How one is this way and one is that yeah. way, and um, but you know, that's, it makes some sense. So, there you go. All right, here you see the water heater tank in place. Everything's connected up. Got the pump house controls, etc., on the on the wall. And it looks like it's just ready for final hookup and set up for operation in a few weeks. Well, there you have it. After some good research and planning and a professional installation job by the Hindsight team, Sandra and Justin will now have a water heater system for their renovated home that is driven primarily by energy from an abundant and renewable resource, Colorado sunshine.